What a sunrise right there. This is Kel Land on the go with all I need to know in news and weather as you begin your day. A parking lot of a central Sioux Falls store was taped off after an incident last night. Our Kelloland News crew was able to capture this video of the scene. A sergeant with Sioux Falls Police tells us that the incident started in the 1000 block of North Dakota Avenue and ended up at 8th and Spring. We hope to learn more at this morning's police briefing. You can watch it live on our website starting at 1030. Meanwhile, one person is dead after a fire in Madison last night. The Lake County Sheriff's Office tells us it happened just after 9.30 p.m. Authorities say at least two people were inside at the time and one was able to make it out. The cause of the fire is under investigation. This is a developing story. Stay with Kelloland News on air and online for updates as they become available. Investigators in Pier are looking into what sparked a fire on the east side of the city. The Pier Fire Chief says crews were called to a home in the area of North Taylor Avenue and Pask Drive just after 2 o'clock Monday afternoon. Firefighters arriving on scene found fire working up into the home. Just after crews arrived, a 20-pound cylinder exploded, which damaged the roof of the house next house over. The fire was eventually knocked down. No one was hurt. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Brian Karsten starting the day with storms in western Kelloland, Brian. We sure are. We've been tracking that here uh, throughout the morning and continue to be weather aware in the Black Hills as some hail makers are uh, making their presence known there in the parts of the northern hills. Additionally to that, there could be uh, more storms on radar later today and tonight. A risk of severe weather running from the western part of South Dakota. Kind of rounding the bend here through winter, Gregory, and just about parallel Interstate 90 or south here uh, for late this evening. And it does uh, co-link to our best instability, probably the best parameters for those storms will overlay in those areas. That's where temperatures will be in the 80s for the most part from Yankton to winter. We are going to catch low 70s in the northeast and primarily driven by the, the increase in clouds and the intermittent rain chances. We'll get into future cast and those details coming up. Thank you, Brian. A Yankton couple says they have questions about a new business coming to their city. Paradigm Technology plans to build a $4.5 million manufacturing plant on a prime piece of real estate in Yankton at Broadway and 31st Street. The company plans to make high-end bolt-action rifles. However, Jim Means and Roberta Amber say the company's agreement with the city is raising red flags for them. They can't find very much information on the company or the owner, so Means wrote a letter to be read at the city commission meeting, encouraging the city commission to gather more information. So they said, well, if you want to push it any further, you need to come to a public meeting and, and ask in public. I actually thought it was kind of just doing my civic duty to <laughs> encourage them to check into this. And uh, evidently, they didn't see it that way. Yankton Economic Development Director Dave Mingo says confidentiality and trust are two basic keys to economic development, and he has confidence that despite questions, Paradigm will be a good fit for Yankton. Construction of Veterans Parkway continues south of Sioux Falls. The six-lane highway will one day connect I-90 with I-29 to act as sort of a bypass around the city. But as we found out, not everyone is pleased with what's happening. Homeowners say the stretch of Veterans Parkway is being built too close to their homes. We actually need a wall to help something better to help stop. And that would also reduce the noise because Doing this, you can really hear the noise. But Public Works Director Mark Cotter says there won't be a wall built, but rather trees and bushes to help buffer the noise and add high-tension cable guardrails. But the homeowners say that's not enough. And just over 36 years ago, Kelloland News visited with Marcus Yoakum, a farmer who was building a cruise ship near Corona. He planned to run the boat on Big Stone Lake, but ran into obstacles with the U.S. Coast Guard and South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. Project never reached its full potential. He sold his property a few years back, but his boat remains firmly entrenched in a grove of trees on the property. The current property owner sent us this photo of the ship this year. For a closer look at the current state of the ship and the process it took to build it back in 1987, check out this Kelloland.com original by our Jacob Newton. 
That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, our weather today, well, this chance of storms, of course, a big topic of conversation. We had numerous cells yesterday that formed just south of Sioux Falls and ended up delivering some hail reports around Tabor and around Viberg, kind of rural areas there. Uh, Hudson was on the list. A little bit of northwest Iowa, too, near Dune, Iowa, and eastward. So just be weather aware that uh, today the risk starts in the Black Hills. We've had some ongoing severe weather coming into Spearfish and parts of the northern hills, and I think some more cells will be developing. Let's look at the timeline on this and this collection of rain coming in. Again, meandering into central South Dakota here uh, through 10 and 11 o'clock. The question will be how much of this will hold together as it crosses the James Valley and goes east. I think it's somewhat limited around Sioux Falls, but I have to throw in that chance of rain after three or four o'clock. And then I would gear up for storms blowing up in the Black Hills. That looks to be pretty likely that we're gonna spin something off, off the hills and then kind of take a trajectory down toward, let's say Mission, Martin, maybe Winter. We'll keep an eye on that and then New thunderstorms can develop across eastern South Dakota uh, after the 10 o'clock news tonight. Now, will that be widespread thunderstorms? Well, the way this year has gone, probably not. But it's a shot that we could get, we could catch some groupings of counties with some nice rain. You know, if we can get above a half an inch and then maybe work on a few one inch reports, I think that's very doable. Whether or not Sioux Falls catches that particular storm, Again, remains to be seen, but we're going to throw Sioux Falls at least into that chance of thunderstorms. The forecast tomorrow, though, uh, tends to repeat a few more of these cells in the morning. We'll see if that materializes in the northeast and then kind of a northwest wind will take over. We're still in the 80s, though, for the vast majority of Kettleland. Today, we're definitely cooler than yesterday. No more 90s, except for Pine Ridge at 91. Brookings, 72 today. Also low 70s in Watertown. Forecast lows tonight, upper 50s to low 60s. Tomorrow, with those thunderstorm chances in the morning, we're going to hit that in Sioux Falls. And then maybe another round that <clears throat> excuse me, can come into the northeast during the late morning. And that, of course, keeps temperatures down a few degrees. 80s, most of that seven day. Normal high is about 86. So I think we're still going to average a little bit below normal. The storm chance comes back Friday for uh, parts of South Dakota. I would uh, tend to keep you a little on your toes there on that, though. That chance could shift a little bit into Thursday evening as we watch the timing on this northwest flow pattern. Next week, probably Aberdeen at this point staying in the low 80s. I don't want to crank up the heat just yet. Uh, Pier Rapid City will be likely in the mid 80s. That chance of rain is best in Pier on Friday. And of course, we're still going to kick out some daily chances of thunderstorms in the Black Hills, at least through Friday and Rapid City on average in the low to mid 80s. Check out the rest of the details of the weather online at Kevoland.com.